we know that resting heart rate is associated with outcomes in cardiology. However, because it's so associated with so many other comorbidities, it has really not been considered much of a risk factor, and maybe we need to rethink that. We have in the April 1st issue of Jack a paper that is entitled Resting Heart Rate as Predictor for Left Ventricular Dysfunction and Heart Failure, the Multi-Ethnic Study of Atherosclerosis. And I am first with uh, the boss here, Dr. Uh, Dr. Joao Lima, who is a professor of medicine at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and a colleague and first author, are you in this? This is uh, Dr. Barath Ambali, who is PhD. This is, first off, I love Mesa. Mesa has given so many great statistics in an audience of people that we really need more data about. So I always love seeing Mesa data. Can you talk about how you came about looking at heart rate in the first place? First of all, we love that you love Mesa <laughs> because uh, we are involved in the study from the very beginning. Oh, it's wow. design. Uh, Congratulations. And, uh, we also love the study. We think the study has contributed uh, quite a, a fair amount uh, to what we know at this point. And we are very proud to be MES investigators, Barat and I. The relationship between heart rate and uh, prognosis and what's going to happen to you has been reported before, that a high heart rate entails uh, uh, a bad prognosis or entails bad things. Um, in MESA, we thought we would take a look at this, but with a look towards seeing if heart rate uh, not only predicted heart high heart rate predict heart failure, but also predicted um, impaired myocardial function, impaired myocardial deformation. And for that, you know, uh, Dr. Ambali is one of the national uh, experts on, on myocardial uh, deformation. And I mean, it, it does make sense because the heart of the heart is working with every beat, you know, it's going faster and faster, then one would think that it might be harder on the heart. What did you do in this particular study? So in this particular study, in, uh, as Dr. Lima just mentioned, in addition to looking at how heart rate predicts uh, uh, heart failure, we looked at function, both regional dis uh, myocardial function in the form of circumferential strain rate uh, and strain, which is a subclinical indicator of myocardial dysfunction, in addition to the global function quantified by ejection fraction. And this was done in the mesopopulation or a subpopulation of the mesopopulation with where 1,000 uh, participants had a follow-up from a baseline MR exam and a repeat MR exam five years later. And what did you find? We found that not only does uh, resting heart rate predict uh, heart failure, uh, this, uh, using Cox regression, we found that this, in fact, re this relationship becomes stronger after we adjust for other comorbidities, like hypertension, diabetes, and excluding participants with uh, coronary heart disease, COPD, Etc. This is this becomes even stronger, and when we looked at how heart rate is related to function, we found that not only is it related cross-sectionally to uh, reduction in uh, regional dysfunction and global dysfunction, even longitudinally it's related to both re reduction in ejection fraction and circumferential strain or regional dysfunction. In the past, it hasn't gotten as much attention, possibly from what I said at the beginning, because it's, it's associated, heart rate is associated with so many comorbidities that how do you tease out? And I think you figured out how to tease it out. That was the biggest contribution of MESA. It's the, uh, we have so many, uh, so much data coming from so many different aspects of uh, human biology that we could um, uh, control for many of these variables. And when you control for all this, the heart rate is still is related to developing heart failure right. later in life. So um, that was intriguing. What's the clinical message here? I mean, what's the boss say? This is a, a great paper. What's the boss say in terms of what this means? I think we should be looking at ways to prevent heart failure by controlling the heart rate. Both Barat and I are very involved in uh, the idea of designing a trial within the MESA study mm -hmm. to, or in other populations, we're still looking at what would be the best 
a way to nest this idea, but to control the heart rate and then measure the heart that heart failure is, is prevented. Because heart failure increases with age and it has such a high risk by the time one gets older that it 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 is responsible not only for mortality but a great deal of incapacity of morbidity right. uh, and and decrease in quality of life. So if we devise the simple strategy to reduce the heart rate and prevent heart failure, that would, in my view, translate to a lot of dividends in terms of quality of life. So you're the expert on this. Where should you go next? Where do you want to go? Well, uh, as Dr. Lima just mentioned, I think looking at a clinical trial for reduction in heart rate and then looking at systolic dysfunction and diastolic dysfunction too because HEF-PEF is one of the indicators for which I think heart rate is strongly related as well to it. And so that would be a good uh, start to look at uh, maintaining heart rate or making sure heart rate doesn't increase, controlling for heart rate, that's the word I'm looking for, and looking at uh, function, systolic and diastolic dysfunction change in addition to just cardiovascular events. So this is in the April 1st issue of Jack, and uh, please make sure you take a look at this and a variety of other things. For Cardiosource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.